Doctor Who is not a simple show to film. The small matter of how to create this week's monster, spaceship or alien planet has been giving various production teams sleepless nights since 1963. Even those moments that might seem relatively simple on the surface – conversations, basic stunts, eating a picnic – can be way more complicated and stressful than you realised. So with that in mind, I'm Ellie with Who Culture, here with 10 simple Doctor Who scenes that were a nightmare to film. Number 10 – The Uncooperative Kitty The Doctor had to contend with some evil cat nuns in New Earth, but compared to the feline featured in Fear Her, they were an absolute dream. This cat, aptly named Ginger, is a much more important part of the episode than you might think. It's the first resident of the street to go missing before the Doctor and Rose's eyes, a moment conveyed not through some fancy visual effect, but the simple image of Ginger disappearing into a cardboard box. Or at least it should have been simple. The cat was the most disobedient cat in the history of cats, recalled executive producer Julie Gardner on the episode's DVD commentary. The cat playing Ginger wanted to do everything but go into the box, earning itself a reputation as one of the most uncooperative supporting artists in Doctor Who history. The accompanying instalment of Doctor Who Confidential contains a whole montage of the crew's attempts to get it to play ball. From staying put, to rolling over, to exploring the neighbours' gardens, this cat did it all. Number 9 – A Rather Chilly Picnic not many people can say they've kissed the Doctor, and it's a big deal if you're one of the lucky few. I mean, obviously Riversong wins, but you know. Madame de Pompadour actor Sophia Miles confessed that her initial reaction to the script for The Girl in the Fireplace was, I can't believe I get to kiss Doctor Who! For Joanna Page, the experience was quite different when playing Queen Elizabeth I in The Day of the Doctor. Not because of any hard feelings between her and David Tennant, but because of the conditions they were shooting in. As Page recalled to The Mirror, trying to appear romantic and relax in a cold countryside location was easier said than done. It was absolutely freezing. It was blowing a gale, she remembered. And David Tennant's feeding me grapes as I'm desperately shivering. I think our lips were turning blue and I stopped feeling my hands. If you go back and watch the scene, you'll see that just about everything in front of the camera is swaying in the wind, making these shots much more difficult to capture than they appeared. Everyone is probably jealous, Paige continued, thinking she gets to kiss the Tenth Doctor and it's all romantic. But it's not. My lips were numb and my hands were chapped. Still, at least she wasn't kissing a Zygon. Number 8 – Levitating Daleks. It's an oft-repeated myth that the Daleks only learn to levitate in the modern series. But in fact, decades prior, we'd seen Daleks emerge from water and sand in the 60s stories The Dark Invasion of Earth and The Chase. Neither shot was as straightforward to create as they appear. In the case of the former, an operator was present inside the Dalek wearing a wetsuit and a carefully concealed cable was used to lift up the prop. For The Chase, a similar method was attempted, with a Dalek, this time Sun's operator, buried in the sand. The idea was to pull it out with a Land Rover parting of the ways style. But what actually happened is that the sand proved too powerful for the Land Rover, with the Dalek refusing to budge. The production team had to go back to the drawing board and ultimately ended up completing the shot in studio with miniatures. It's no surprise that Daleks weren't often shown levitating back then, given how difficult the effect was to pull off with the technology of the time. Number 7 – The Arctic House The Covid-19 pandemic affected the production of Series 13 in many ways. Some surprising, some less surprising. For instance, the first two years of the Jodie Whittaker era enjoyed extensive overseas shooting, but travel restrictions meant that this was out of the question for flux. Instead, there was a greater reliance on studio builds, with the action being centred around standing sets. Less obvious was the impact of social distancing behind the camera, especially when it came to shooting on smaller sets. Ahead of broadcast, showrunner Chris Chibnall teased that one of the most difficult things to film had been a half-page scene in a bedroom on location. Location. Director Jamie Magnus Stone later confirmed that this was a reference to the Arctic Circle house in the Halloween apocalypse, a simple dialogue scene that was actually highly difficult due to Covid restrictions. He said, I think the hardest day, weirdly, was shooting in the Arctic Circle house in episode 1, because I think that was the only small interior location that we had to shoot in. You had to do this human Tetris because you couldn't have any more than 4 people or 5 people per room. It was all a bit of a headache. Honestly, what an actual nightmare. Is anyone else glad that social distancing Distancing is now a thing of the past. Number 6 – Arriving at New Earth is anything but a breeze For their first trip in the TARDIS, the Tenth Doctor takes Rose Tyler somewhere special – New Earth, in the year 5 billion and 23. The script called for this planet to look idyllic, with sunshine, sparkling sea and a couple of 
planets over the horizon. It was filmed at the Gawa Peninsula, a beauty spot known for its spectacular views and sunsets, which fits this description perfectly, at least in theory. Plans to shoot the Doctor and Rose arriving on New Earth in the summer were scuppered by delays in the shooting schedule, and when the crew did make it to the location, they were greeted with some truly atrocious windy weather. This turned what should have been a simple chat between the Doctor and Rose into a huge challenge. The actors were consistently struggling with hair blowing in their faces, an afternoon rainstorm caused a planned TARDIS shot to be cancelled, and the material that was shot had to be heavily redubbed in post-production. The cast and crew were all pretty miserable filming this scene, so when Rose says, it's beautiful, I love this, that's probably some of the greatest acting in the series. Number 5. The Olive Grove Reshoot Following overseas shoots in Amsterdam and Lanzarote for seasons 20 and 21, Doctor Who headed to Spain for season 22's The Two Doctors. Like City of Death, Ark of Infinity and Planet of Fire, The Two Doctors was, in part, an excuse for the cast and crew to have a bit of a holiday. But in this case, things weren't exactly plain sailing. Temperatures soared to 38 degrees Celsius and a stomach bug did the rounds at 1.2. But the most problematic individual scene was one between Oscar and Anita in the Olive Grove. When this footage was returned, to the UK, it was discovered that there was a scratch on the film negative, meaning that the scene would have to be reshot. The only problem was that actors James Saxon and Carmen Gomez had returned to the UK too, and sending them back to Spain would come at great cost to the production. Still, the actors were soon shipped off and the scene was refilmed. So just imagine how furious producer John Nathan Turner was when he discovered that the reported scratch on the film negative was barely visible, meaning that the reshoot was totally unnecessary. Following the two doctors, John Nathan Turner reportedly vowed that Doctor who would never go abroad again. After this roller coaster, you can hardly blame him. But aren't we all glad that that didn't stick forever? Number 4. The Doctor and Rose in Victorian Cardiff The Ninth Doctor and Rose's arrival in Victorian Cardiff in The Unquiet Dead is, on the surface, nothing too complicated. It's basically two characters walking down a street. However, the amount of work that went into creating this street and bringing it to life was immense. In fact, it was the biggest shoot that the BBC Wales team had attempted up to this point. It's an an enormous thing to coordinate, producer Phil Collinson told Doctor Who Confidential. And with eight horse-drawn carriages, 70-odd extras in period dress and heaps of fake snow, not to mention the fact that it was a night shoot, you can certainly see where he was coming from. The snow, in particular, was something of a logistical nightmare. It took much longer to put down than planned and coupled with the wind caused great distress to the horses. It was a very difficult environment to work in, recalled director Euros Lin. And I was panicking that I didn't have the performances that I wanted from these artists. In the end, he needn't have Worried. The scene came together perfectly in the edit, resulting in one of Series 1's most memorable, evocative settings. Number 3. The Doctor's Epic Horse Stunt Riding Arthur the horse through a ballroom mirror? Piece of cake. Well, okay, this scene wasn't that simple. But it's still pretty bonkers how much work went into it. The sequence had to be shot three times at three different locations with different setups present each time. The actual ballroom scene was shot at a stately home in England, but the horse wasn't actually allowed in the room. So a portable rig was used, allowing close-up shots of the Doctor atop Arthur to be filmed. A separate shoot was required for the exploding mirror, which was achieved by smashing a glass window in a green screen screen studio. Then the material involving the real horse had to be captured separately in a paddock with a stunt double appearing as the Doctor in some shots. And the icing on the cake? David Tennant is allergic to horses. According to those involved, it was a terribly complicated and terrifically expensive moment to create. But it was worth it in the end. It only lasts a matter of seconds and looks a little bit rough by today's standards, but it's nothing short of iconic. Number 2. Chameleon's Tricky Introduction Few would describe Doctor Who as cutting-edge television, but the show has always tried to pioneer new technology where possible, to varying degrees of success. In 1983, producer John Nathan Turner learnt of something that had the potential to change the show forever, a fully automated and supposedly fully functioning prop robot available for use in TV and film. Following a demonstration at the BBC Television Centre, John Nathan Turner was impressed enough to take the robot on, not just as a guest character, but as a fully-fledged companion. He believed that this new character, a shape-shifting android named Chameleon, could prove just as popular as K-9. However, the studio recording for his first story, The King's Demons, ended up being a complete disaster, with the prop constantly breaking down and its mouth struggling to stay in sync with the dialogue. These scenes had to be reshot at a later date, and Chameleon's involvement in further stories was severely limited. His time on the show was essentially 
over before it had even begun. It's a shame, because Chameleon was one of the most unique Doctor Who companions ever. He had a certain charm about him, and with a little more refinement, he could have complemented the show quite nicely. Number 1. Stonehenge Struggles Series 5 finale, The Pandorica Opens and The Big Bang takes viewers across the galaxy and back and forth through time, but by far, the biggest logistical and budgetary issue were the scenes set at Stonehenge. After being fortunate to be granted permission to film there, which wasn't guaranteed, they were only allowed to shoot for a single night. Luckily, most of the story's Stonehenge scenes were also set at night, except for one, the moment where the Doctor, River and Amy first investigate the monument. This simple conversation sequence could only be filmed as soon as the sun had risen, which fell within that nighttime shooting mandate in a narrow 45 minute window of daylight. And as you can imagine, that resulted in a mad rush to get everything done. Director Toby Haynes told Doctor Who Confidential that a scene like this would usually take up to two hours, which was problem one. Problem two was that heavy equipment such as rigs and cranes were banned in order to protect the site. And problem three was that they could only light the scene from ground level rather than from above. All of these restrictions made those 45 minutes the most tense and difficult of the entire shoot. In spite of the challenges, Haynes concluded that they were pretty lucky to get away with shooting there. And he's not wrong. And that's everything for this list, but we've got plenty of other videos about behind the scenes shenanigans, including scenes that actors hated shooting, and there's some bloopers as well, if that's your thing. In the meantime, I've been Ellie with Who Culture, and in the words of Riversong herself, goodbye, sweeties.